Hello there, what's up? Welcome back. So we're in the mood for a bit of nice stir fry this evening. I haven't had it in a little while and feeling a little bit hungry. So today we're going to be making a vaguely racist stir fry, or as I like to put it, a vaguely Asian stir fry. That's kind of what it is, but not really, because I bought all of it from Sainsbury's, and Sainsbury's is very English. So anyway, we're going to be having many nice things. Got some bean sprouts, got an onion, garlic, pepper, asparagus, classic baby corn, a bit of rocket to put on at the end, I've got loads of seeds, many, uh, many seeds, big old, big old cabbage, I love their cabbage, uh, I've got a bit of lemon juice, pretty solid stuff, and there's some, some udon noodles, they're pretty good because you can stick them in the cupboard and they kind of last forever. Anyway, so we're going to be doing this a little bit more professionally than previously, because I've got myself a nice stand now. I just actually take this off the stand and you actually see, look at this professional piece of camera equipment that I've prepared especially for this video. It's actually, it it's taken me eight weeks to construct this fine piece of mastery. Um, it's come from the, um, uh, let's see, it's come from the, yeah, if you can read that right there. It says, it's come from the land down under, can you hear the thunder? So obviously a men at work reference there from the great people at Nestle who obviously create camera equipment and this is created from um, Andrex, I believe. Not actually Andrex because I can't afford it, but you know, let's just pretend it's Andrex and you'll think a little bit better of me. So of course the first step to any delicious stir fry is onions and garlic go wonderfully together. So I've just pulled out a single piece, I'm going to actually grab a second piece. This is a garlic bowl if you're not used to them. They actually... Apparently, they also create small little cannons built in, which is quite nice. But anyway, we're going to need to peel this garlic very professionally and very finely. Those of you that were worried that this was not sharp enough or it was a safety knife or something, it's not. It's a very sharp knife. It's, you know, I haven't got any, like, paper to cut or anything, but this, this is a proper sharp kitchen knife. But um, I also invested in a nice knife sharpener, so if I wanted to, I could just do a couple slices through there and sharpen it. I'm not going to, because there's a chance I might... Uh, do it improperly and they might get like knife shavings in my food, not the best. It's sharp enough for today though, I hope. If not, I'll just give it a quick sharpen off stream. Off stream. Oh, it's a bit pretty good, a good idea for a stream actually, remember. Remember to remind me that. Anyway, so I don't know, I probably, okay, I'll, I'll use the right hand side of this chopping board or potentially at this angle. Yeah, that works. So anyway, chop one end off, chop under end, other end off, like that. Grab it under the knife, and crush that part and it comes wonderfully out of the skin. Look at that. Peeling garlic takes a second. Good idea. Don't bother like trying to manually do it because that takes for absolute ever and it gets all like sticky for some reason. I have no idea why garlic's so sticky. It just is. I'm also going to have to review how much of this is actually picked up on camera because I'm not entirely sure if I'm doing this off camera or not. I have to pause and have a little look back and then I'll have to rethink my strategy. All right, that seemed roughly good in terms of camera angle. I can keep using that, so. Take that all out of the skin, leave that to the side for now. And we're going to not dice this, but we're going to just lightly chop it into little pieces. We're not going to completely annihilate it though, it's very easy to over chop it and turn it into a paste. I want this to be rather large chunks of garlic. I'm quite a garlicky man, so the larger the chunks, I feel like the harder they'll stir and or fry. So let's just stop that on there. Anyway. That's the garlic side done. Very nice. We'll keep that off to the side for now. Second half is the garlic. Oh, the, not the garlic. The the onion. Many ways to peel an onion, as I showed last time. Uh, we're going to do it a very, very lazy way today, which involves. I have to try and get it this way. Top one end off. Keep your thumb in. You know, chop the under other end off. Again, keep your thumb in. Sharp knife. And shit just comes apart. Pretty easy. Uh, Having a bit of difficulty, you can always shove your knife inside some of the layers like that quite nicely and it'll kind of come apart. And I'll speed up this because I'm aware it'll take a little a couple of seconds. Alright, there we go. Shove this all into our little, our little bowl I'm using as a bin. I think I told this strategy last time but it's useful to have a little bowl on hand to put all your food waste in so you don't have to keep going back and forth to the bin or taking up uh, table space with rubbish. Anyway, still going? Yeah, still going. Going to want to use this entire onion today. I'm in an onioning mood, so slice down the middle. 
and uh, we're gonna do, we're gonna do. Come on, how do I want to slice this today? Um, I'm actually gonna do large cuts today. I'm in a large kind of cut way, so I'm gonna angle it so you can hopefully you can see this. I'm just gonna go for some nice thin but long vertical slices of onion. Very good. Don't cut your fingers off. There we go. And we're just gonna leave it like that, nice and nice and big. These will come apart in the oven, um, or not on the uh, on the what do you call it? The frying pan. This will come off in the frying pan as like nice little kind of half rings. So we'll just leave it like this, nice big chunks. They'll come apart quite easily. And we'll do the same with the second one. Try and angle it again. I'll say these are like a couple of millimeters wide, half a centimeter. I'm starting to get the. Uh, their war cry is starting to seep into my eyes, I'm afraid, and it's causing me to cry a little bit, but that's perfectly fine. Oh god, I'm sorry. I'm just going to shove those large old onion chunks to the side, and with our garlic. Those will be the first things to fry. Uh, next, what do we want to do? Uh, alright, alright, alright. Next, we'll probably want to just chop up the corn and asparagus. Corn and asparagus, fantastic, bit expensive. Asparagus is starting to come to season, actually, so you see it getting a little bit cheaper if you live up north. AKA, you know, UK, uh, Northern Europe and stuff. I don't know about where else in the world it's grown. I know it's at least grown here fairly fairly commonly around the summer slash autumn time, so it tends to get a little bit cheaper. Look at this, camera angle's amazing. I don't have to do diddly squat, and I don't have to do it one-handed either. It's an amazing invention, the idea of having a stand. So I'm just gonna kinda chop it. Big old, big old chunks of some uh, baby corn over there, shove that away. Same thing with the asparagus. Spears. They're actually called asparagus spears, I'm apologise. Uh, yeah, let's get, let's get five, a healthy amount. I really like my asparagus. It makes your wee smell funny, but other than that, it's pretty good. Depends whether or not you're inter interacting your wee with other people on a regular basis. So if, if, that, if that affects you, you know, I'm, I apologise, but hopefully it doesn't. Oh god, these are some tough asparagus. Maybe they've pulled them a little bit sooner than they should have, or I'm doing something wrong, but I've cooked with plenty of asparagus in my life. Normally doesn't do this. Anyway, large old chunks again, I'd say about about thumb size, yeah. This is some pretty sure my knife hasn't dulled. I think this is just some really tough asparagus. So just put your weight into it. Yeah, it's getting a little bit easier near the top. I think it's just out of season. And of course the tops, which are the best parts, we're going to leave. And we're going to put those in right at the end because they're really delicious when they're like tender like this. So I'm just going to kind of shave them off just so there's the top left. Uh, that, that one's fine. Just kind of like this. And, oh, there we go. This stuff's all going to be fried together. Go up with the sweet corn up there, please. Thank you very much. Spears I'll put for later. I'm actually not sure how much is shown on camera. Oh, you can just see the spears. That's actually some pretty good placement on my part then. Um, also, I guess the pepper. Wash that quickly. Always wash your shit, remember that. Top tip. Um, I don't think I'm going to use a whole pepper today. I always use a whole pepper and it's always way too much, so today I'm just going to halve it. Cut out all the seeds. Shove that in the bin. Rest of it in the bin. And if you've got worries, if you're a little bit worried because there's some seeds left in, just shove it under the sink and they'll all wash out quite nicely. Look at that. Pretty good, pretty good stuff. And there's even a little bit at the bottom, it's turning green. So I want to re remove that. Green bits taste really, uh, really, really nasty. So anyway, just cut this nice thin slices like this. Again, not really too worried. The whole point of stir fry is trying to cut everything so it cooks at the same speed, give or take. It's like the laziest form of cooking and I love it. Because you literally just want to put it all together and just ignore it for a bit. Uh, there you go. Just little chunks of some pepper there. What else do I have? I have a bit of there we go, cabbage. Cabbage is good. You might have grown up thinking, ew, cabbage is nasty, that's what old people eat. And it's true. But it's actually not nasty, it's actually pretty good. So we're just going to be grabbing a couple big old leaves of this. This is a sweetheart cabbage, it's had a very rough couple of days because it's been pulled out of the ground, but it's still a sweetheart at heart. Let's just pull those out there, check them for worms. There's no worms. I'm, I don't know if this is organic. Does it doesn't really matter. Yeah, it doesn't say. They would have advertised that. They would have been like, oh, these leaves are grown out of rocket fuel or something. That's what organic is. Anyway, just clean that stuff. And we're going to have some quite large chunks of cabbage leaf, but we're going to put it in quite early so it kind of shrivels up and goes a bit smaller. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll this up. This is the ancient woolly roll technique. You'll have to remember this when you're in a 
when you're rich and famous and you're using my cooking strategies. We're just going to roll it up and create little wheels of cabbage, like that. See these little wheels? There we go, very good. So these all, these all look very large, like large chunks of cabbage, but when, once they start cooking they'll actually go down to about like that size, a little bit smaller, so yes, just put that off to the side for a second. Anything else that we had to chop? I don't think so. Okay, so I need to angle this so it's showing the frying pan. Give me a sec. Alright then, the fan will be a little bit louder because now it's a bit closer to it, but you always want your fan on just in case you set the fire alarm off and scare the people upstairs. So we're just going to be using a little bit of, uh, just a bit of olive oil at the bottom of our pan. Actually, I need to focus this, give us a sec. How's that? Is that good phone? You're going to enjoy that? Just get a little bit of, I don't know, about a tablespoon of olive oil and just shove that in the bottom. Have a little look. Yeah. Shove the heat on. Fairly hot. This is a stir fry. This is meant to be nice and toasty. Actually, I can probably move this back a little bit so you can see the flame as well. Look at that. That's pretty nice, isn't it? So about quite a hot flame. I'm just going to quickly heat this up for a second. And the first thing we're going to be cooking is the garlic and the onions. So I'm just going to take that there for a second. Try and manoeuvre myself around this camera. Garlic in. There we go. This is a much more professional cooking video because I've actually half thought about what I'm going to do rather than just shove stuff in a pan. So I'm just going to stick some garlic in. Get it all coated in that nice olive oil. Fairly healthy, give or take. Compared to other oils, I don't think it's too bad. Apparently you're actually meant to have it. Like, you're meant to have olive oil. It's meant to be good for you. You're meant to have it in your diet. So, you know, if you're wondering why you're not eating correctly, just down a bottle of olive oil, that's what I'd say. Um, as you can tell, I'm also not a medical student, so you might not want to take what I'm saying seriously, ever. That'd be a terrible idea. Anyway, because we've got some large chunks of uh, olives and stuff here, I'm going to show you what's in the pan. Have a look. Uh, we'll just give it like a minute or two, fry it like this for a minute or two, just the garlic and the, uh, the onion. And we just kind of want these to be pre-fried a little bit before we put everything else in, because everything here is just vegetables, we can just have it nice and tender and nice and tasty. So we just want to have these, not necessarily golden brown, because that will mean they're done, but we want to give them, I'd say about two, three minutes, just to fry for a little bit. So I'll skip forward in time. Alright, so the one thing we actually do have to worry about is the bean sprouts, because they're actually a bit nasty to have raw. It's probably the only thing here that you can't eat raw. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open that now, and let it stir fry along with these things. So these have been in on here for about, I'd say, two minutes. This is the rough colour they are. Some of them are a little bit darker. Most of them are still fairly yellowy-greeny. But that's all they really need for now. So I'm just going to cut a slit into these in this packet. By the way, bean sprouts, amazingly cheap. This entire bag was like 80p maybe. Got it from Sainsbury's, regular supermarket. What's that, half a kilo? 300 grams. It's actually 300 grams of beans. Anyway, these don't really shrink in size much, so we just want to have a fair old amount. Just chuck those in. There you go, a little bit more. They're pretty tasty, and they're fairly good for you. So if you're having a stir fry, it's not bad to keep this stuff in the fridge. Again, they're just little bean sprouts, that's what they are. So just shove that in the fridge. It's pretty tasty, pretty healthy. It's one of those things you can really shove into most stir fries. I try to focus it back. So again, oh, listen to that. Please don't set off my fire alarm. That's all I'm begging you. All right, so I'm, I'm fearful of the fire alarm, so I'm just gonna turn it up to full whack. I apologize if you can't hear me very well. Next, we're gonna be turning the heat down a little bit. About halfway, I'd say. Don't want it to get too hot and start burning. Next, you want to shove in that lovely everything else, basically. The whole point of a stir fry is you're meant to cook it basically all together. I just pre fry a lot of stuff. There we go. Shove that all in. In it goes. Isn't that great? So, I just want to ensure nothing burns. Give it a good old, good old turn like this. Give a look. Looks really nice and green and healthy. Most of this will go down to basically nothing once all the water evaporates. Especially, I'd say, like the onions and the cabbage and stuff. You can see the onion pieces. They've already started to come down fairly small, like the one on that spoon there. So just give it a couple of minutes again on the old half heat, not full heat anymore. The reason we full heat it at the start is because, really, with onion and garlic, you want to kind of give it a good three, you know, two, three minutes of heavy heat before you put everything else on, but you don't want to burn the uh, vegetables, so you put those down on half. So you just give that... Oh shit, I've accidentally, I completely forgot, I've put the heads of the asparagus in at the same time as everything else, so not to worry, something I have to try and remember to do next time, I think I just completely forgot. Anyway, stuff's all starting to look pretty good. Anything else we have to throw in? Let's have a look. 
rocket I'm going to put at the end. I've got some seeds. Uh, these can actually go in now. It doesn't really matter when you put them in. I've got some, some sunflower seeds. Don't know how well you can see that, but... Shove a... Okay, there's no point in me trying to do a handful. I'm just going to shove a fair amount of seeds in. Ta-da! There you go. You can kind of see there if I angle it. Put about that many seeds in. Not very many. They add a nice little crunch. And I've also got some sesame... Sesame seeds. Yeah, here we go. Some nice sesame seeds. Don't know if you can read that. That's what the text says. No, it doesn't matter. Fuck it. Uh, I'm just going to shove a nice amount of those in. Sesame is very, very Asian, I'm sure. I'm not really sure. I've only ever had sushi once, and it wasn't a very good experience. Everyone always tells me, oh, it's the best thing in the world. You've got to, like, you've got to have this raw fish and kind of sticky rice. And it was like, okay, okay I'll give it a go. And it just tasted a bit like a bit like raw fish and rice, basically. It wasn't really that great. But maybe I just had low-quality sushi. It was at, like, a all-you-can-eat kind of buffet thing that went with my flat rates. So, you know, maybe that was why. Maybe they were out for a little bit and they kind of dried off. Anyway, it's starting to come together quite well. You can see everything. The amount of oil we put in the start was plenty for everything. Potentially even a tiny little bit too much. But you can see there's actually... I don't know if you can, you, I don't know if you can see, but there's no residue oil at the bottom. There's nothing... There's no liquid. So that's how you know it's vaguely healthy. If there's residue oil, you're probably doing something wrong. So just add less next time. Not that olive oil's too bad for you, but, you know, I don't think anything's good for you in high quantities. So that stuff's starting to look pretty solid. I'd say everything, all in all, be about five minutes on the hob so far. Now's a good time to shove the noodles in. These need about two minutes, I think. Yeah. So these are some udon. They are called quick-to-cook udon noodles. I don't have any fresh noodles. Those are my favourite. They're just made out of egg and rice or no sorry egg and uh egg and wheat i guess fresh noodles are made out of but these are made out of like whatever the fuck udon is Wait, i didn't drop the camera everything's fine udon's apparently made from uh water wheat okay so i guess it's just wheat have a look up in the ingredients you don't need to see it. it's all fuzzy anyway so we're just going to open this nicely shove this packet in like that and very daintily kind of break them up as we put them in because it's kind of a block right now so I want, them, I want them to be nice and small so they all stir fry quite fast if you just shove the block in like I do many times it kind of if you have to separate the block with the spoon it's a bit of an effort so just kind of crumble it as you put it in maybe not the best way to do it I think you're actually meant to put soy sauce with it but I'm not in a soy sauce mood today so shove all that stuff in give it a good stir get ooh, nice coated in oil uh, not something I'm personally into, but, you know, if you're into being coated in oil, I'd recommend stir-fries frequently. Uh, it's all starting to come together quite nicely now. You want to stir-fry this for about another two minutes, I'd say, to make sure the udon is done quite nicely. But the best part about those noodles, they're, they're like, I don't know, 80p. You can stick them in a cupboard, and they're fairly tasty, and they're quite large old noodleinos. And everyone likes a large noodle. Uh, I don't know what they're telling you. <laughs> what on earth? Um, actually, I'm going to put a bit of salt and pepper in. Now's a decent time. You can basically put salt and pepper in whenever. I'm going to do it now, so... I know it's not focusing on my hand. That's about a pinch. A large pinch. A bit of salt. Give it a stir. Thank you, fan, for stopping the fire alarm. But also probably destroying the audio quality. A bit of pepper. A bit of black pepper. A couple of stirs of that. Okay, a fair, fair few stirs of that. I quite like my black pepper. Try and refocus it. How are you doing, camera? Are you doing alright? He's doing alright. So just stir all that delicious seasoning in. We're not going over the top with the seasoning, just salt, pepper, a couple of seeds and stuff. Not going over the top. If you want, actually, for a tip, uh, chilli flakes go pretty well. I didn't drop anything, don't worry. Everything's perfectly fine. My professional camera setup may not be set up for this kind of thing. Anyway. Curry powder is also pretty decent. You can just put a little bit of that in if you want. I'm not going to today. But it adds a nice little kick. Um, soy sauce is all right. I'm not going to do it today. But yeah, we're just going to keep it nice and simple for today. Make sure nothing's burning. That's why you stir fry it. If you don't stir it, stuff will stick to the bottom and the sides and just cook and burn. And that's what set your fire alarm off, you idiot. Oh dear, oh well. It's all coming together quite nicely now into a nice old, vaguely stir fry looking thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's looking pretty decent, isn't it? We're also going to shove in some... Oh, what are we going to do? Ah, uh, there we go. We're going to put a bit of lemon juice in. So you normally want to put this in right at the end. I'm about to take it off the heat. Actually, I'll give it another minute. One more minute, and then we can add its zesty goodness. The best kind of goodness, really. Now, I didn't used to... I used to think, who on earth would buy this? That's a stupid idea. Just buy a lemon. And then I, you know, moved into my own house, and I realised that lemons are about 40 pence each, and they give you about, like, you know, a, a mole's testicle worth of uh, lemon juice. So being able to buy, like, a big old bottle of lemon juice for, like, a quid is actually pretty all right, because you can just use it for uh, seasoning and use it in your stir-fries and stuff. Whereas, you know, you buy lemons if you want to have a lemon zest or a drink or a gin and tonic. You're meant to use limes, obviously, but you can buy lime juice in the same way. I think I just flipped an onion onto my oven. That'll be all right. So, I'd say this is all fairly nicely cooked. You see all the cabbage, big old chunks of the leaves have now come down. It's actually delicious. It's really, really healthy, really, really cheap, and tastes really good. As you've noticed, I have a small reoccurring feature of cheap stuff that tastes good. It may or may not have been as a result of my student experience, but there we go. It's all looking quite solid. I'm gonna flip that off the heat fan could probably come off down a little bit lower. I'm going to leave it on medium, actually. I'm worried about my fire alarm. I've set it off like two days in a row from toast. That toaster over there, it catches bits of bread in it into its foul jaws and then consumes it and turns it into carbon dioxide and other nasty things like carbon and oxygen. Anyway, we're just going to add a little, a couple of little bits of some lemon in here. That's probably too much. It's probably fine. I like lemon anyway. Oh. There we go. Sorry, I forgot to record for a little bit. It was doing it in 30 FPS and it was confusing me. Anyway, I've pulled it off the heat. Not sure how much footage I've lost. It's probably nothing important. Um, hopefully. <laughs> I've taken it off the heat. It's been stir-frying with the udon in for about two minutes or so. Looks like this. Added a little bit of lemon juice via this. Don't know how much I missed again, but it was about one, two, three, four, five or so. Uh, next, what we're going to do is tear in a little bit of delicious fresh rocket. You can use kind of any salad leaf you want, but I'm going to use rocket because it's nice and peppery. Oh wow, Sainsbury's have really fucked me here. Look at this. Look at how delicious and large this bag of rocket is. There's actually only that much rocket in it. Look at that. The fiends. The fiends at Sainsbury's. Anyway, I'm just going to grab a handful of that, shove it in. No heat on, obviously. This stuff's pre-washed, so it sh should be fine. I'm just going to stir that in, off the heat. Mostly just stirring it in so I get an equal amount of rocket. Very tasty. And uh, just leave that like that. Very good. Was there anything else I needed to add, or was that it? I think that was it. All right then, so I'm going to plate this up in a very professional manner, and I'll see you in a second. Anyway, uh, there we go, that's what we've created, a fine, delicious meal. My phone battery's about to die, so I actually did some pretty good timing there. But, that'll be all for today. Thank you for watching my vaguely racist video about stir fries and how Basically put bean sprouts in it and it makes it Asian. Anyway, thank you for watching and I will see you all next time. I'm currently waiting, by the way, for my audio mixer to arrive. I recently purchased a new audio setup, so hence the lack of actual video game stuff. I actually need a mixer for it to sound half decent, but I've been streaming, so you know, if you're missing out, you can always go onto Twitch and watch me there. Anyway, shit. That'll be all today. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>